Good afternoon, City of Refuge. Nice to be back with you today for uh, Friday with our weekly update with all the announcements and the things that are coming up. So really just want to jump right into it. Tomorrow night we will meet here at 530 at Grace Alliance Chapel for our weekly time where we get together to sing, to pray, to gather around God's Word, and to fellowship together. I will be continuing our uh, study of Psalm 139 tomorrow night, where we're going to be discussing verses 7 through 12 in a message that I'm calling God in the darkness. You know, God is not simply the one who rescues us from those seasons or those places of darkness. He's also the one who comes and sits with us in those places. He's actually in those places before we ever get to them, because often, whether we like to accept this or believe this or not, it's often God that leads us into those dark places. It's often God that leads us into those valleys of the shadow of death because he knows that those places are good for our hearts, but even more that they are good for his glory. So we'd love to have you join us tomorrow night as we come together. If you can't be with us here in person, the service will be live streamed on both Facebook and on YouTube. For those that can't make tomorrow in any way, the service will be uh, replayed Sunday morning at 10 o'clock again on Facebook and on YouTube. Now, for those of you who are in the area, you're available or you all are interested, I want to just let you know that I'm also going to be preaching at Riverside Chapel in Florence Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, different, different sermon, a uh, whole different series that they're working through that I've been invited to come and be part of. So again, that's Riverside Chapel in Florence on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock for anyone that may be interested. Next week on Wednesday night, we have our prayer meeting. Prayer meeting is done via Zoom at 7 o'clock. If you'd like to be a part of the prayer meeting, all you need is to let us have your email address, and we will send out the Zoom link sometime during the day on Wednesday. This is our opportunity where we pray with and we pray for each other. So even if you can't be there, but you have a prayer need, you have something going on on your heart or in your life that you'd like your brothers and sisters to pray with you over, um, just send us an email with that prayer request and we will be sure to pray with you. Again, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, anyone is welcome to join us. And then Thursday night, there is an end of summer celebration for the youth group. So this is going to be at Stewart's on Route 130, a time to eat together, play some games together, and just um, enjoy the end of summer as school is coming up in less than two weeks. So if you have young people, if you have teenagers, those that are headed into seventh grade um, and up, just uh, reach out to Amanda. She'll get you all the information. I know that there is some rain information, I, and I'll just let Amanda share that with you in case the weather doesn't hold up for stewards, but that's this Thursday night. And then we are excited uh, to announce to you, to let you guys know that Saturday Night Children's Ministry is going to resume on Saturday night, September the 10th. So we will begin having children's ministry available during the service on Saturday night with two different groups, one for nursery age children and then one for children up until 10 years old. So it's going to be two different groups. The nursery will be open at the very beginning, so you can bring your children to nursery um, for the entirety of the service. Now, for the, edu the elementary age children, they will leave the sanctuary and go with their teacher to a classroom um, after the worship part of the service. So they will join us for worship, and then they will be, uh, they they'll be instructed that it's time for them to leave. So this is exciting for us. We're going to begin doing this every other week to start. So we'll begin September 10th. Um, and then it'll be every other week. And as we grow into this, as we have more help for this, it will evolve into an every week ministry for your children. Now, you just heard me mention help. We can use help for this. We have a pretty good number of teachers for the elementary age, but we need more that are willing to help out in the nursery age. So if you would please reach out to Melissa, if you're willing to be a part, maybe you say, I'm not ready to be a teacher, but you're willing to be a helper. It will not be an every week commitment. We want to have enough people so that no one is teaching more than once a month, and we'd like to stretch it out even further than that. So the more people we have, the the, the less of a commitment it will be as far as time, although we know that you're going to commit your hearts uh, to seeing God work in the hearts of our children. So again, that begins September 10th. Reach out to Melissa if you're willing to be a part of it at all. And then while I'm asking for volunteers, I also want to let you know that we have a need for help in all of our technology areas. So we have great people doing all of these things, but we need more people. Because just like with teaching, 
it's, it's really my heart's desire that no one has an overwhelming commitment, that they get to the point where they feel like coming to church is not an opportunity for them to fellowship, but it's instead a, a place where they have to work every single week. And so we need help with the soundboard, with video, and with uh, using the video so that we can begin using the screens for the song lyrics and sharing videos of things that are going on and the missions that we support. We need help with the live stream. Um, we need help with social media. And maybe you even have some ideas of things you'd like to see done. We would love to have you jump in and be a part of it. There is no experience or knowledge necessary. If you're willing to serve, then just reach out, let me know, and I will put you in touch with with someone who will train you and then add you to a team and you can be a part of what's happening in those technology areas. I know for some of us that's daunting. I am not a technology guy at all, but I will tell you this. We have great people who are willing to train, who are really patient and who know how to uh, take what your gifts are and put them to work in the areas where you're willing to serve. So again, if you're willing to help out with Sunday, with uh, Saturday night uh, uh, children's ministry, especially with the nursery age, if you're willing to help out in any of the technology areas, just reach out to myself or to Melissa and we'll put you in touch with the people that can get you where you want to be. So with that, I just want to close with just a thought today from our reading plan. Today we started reading Ezekiel in the daily reading plan, and Ezekiel is one of those books that has a few really famous pieces, but as you sit down and read it slowly, it's difficult to read. It's filled with visions and dreams, it's filled with images that are hard to even understand when they're being described, it's filled with some pretty uncomfortable commands where Ezekiel was told to do certain things by God to reveal the hearts of the exiles in Judah. And his calling, to be honest, was difficult and uncomfortable. I'm going to just say it. Some of it's just weird. Like it doesn't make a lot of sense. And yet what we know is it's the word of God. And what we know is that it is, it is profitable for teaching and correction and encouragement but most of all, what we know is that it reveals to us the heart of God. And that's kind of where I want to land for this one or two minutes with you today. Ezekiel begins, chapter 1 of Ezekiel begins five years into the exile that we've just been reading about in Jeremiah and Lamentation. So Judah is in in Babylon, Jerusalem has been destroyed, the temple is no more. They've been there for about five years and Ezekiel is one of those exiles. Ezekiel was one of the priests he would have been working in the temple. He would have been serving God in Jerusalem. But instead he finds himself in exile in Babylon. And what he tells us is at some point when he was 30 years old, five years into this exile, that he and some of the other exiles were standing along the canal that ran through the center of Babylon. And suddenly the heavens opened and he saw the glory of God. And I want you to just think about that for a minute. Ezekiel was in a place he never wanted to be. He was in a place that maybe he didn't deserve to be. And what I mean by that is maybe Ezekiel was one of the ones whose heart was pure. Maybe Ezekiel was one of the ones who hadn't disobeyed the commands of God. Maybe Ezekiel was willing and serving God with all of his heart. And yet, because of what God was doing for the entire nation, he, like Jeremiah, got swept up and had to be a part of the judgment. And yet in a place he never wanted to be, in a place that we would call darkness, in a place of captivity, in a place that was broken and probably where they had to fight daily against hating it, he saw the glory of God. Can I encourage you today that the glory of God is wherever you are? That God being with us is not just about some, you know, nice thought about his presence. It's not just about, you know, the fact that when we go in the secret place that he'll be there and listen to our prayers. The reality is that wherever God leads us, he goes before us and his glory is our rear guard. We're in his hands even when we're not where we want to be. And so today, maybe you're in one of those dark places. Maybe it's because of your own decisions. Maybe you are filled with regret and you know, you know what, I'm here because I did the wrong thing. I want you to understand this. God is in this with you and he's in it for you. Maybe you did go the wrong way, but I promise you this, God went with you and he's calling you to himself, not just to get out of darkness, but so that your heart can find its place of rest in his love. 
Maybe you're in that dark place and it's somebody else's decisions. Maybe it's not your fault at all. Maybe someone's decisions harmed you and put you in a situation you don't deserve to be in. I will not make light of that, but what I will tell you is God's with you in the midst of it. That just like Jeremiah having to go down to Egypt, that just like Ezekiel having to be in Babylon, that just like Daniel having to spend 70 years his entire life in Babylon, that just like Joseph going down to Egypt, that just like Jesus going to the cross. That the reality is, it's not your sin or someone else's sin that has put you there. It's the love of God. Because he's loving you in this place. And he's showing his love through you in this place. And so can I encourage you? Look to see. Can I encourage you? Let's pray that God would give us eyes to see his glory. Let's pray that God would open our hearts to see his character. Let's pray that even in these dark places, that we would not give up and that we would not fight to get out, but that we would ask him, show me what you're doing. Maybe we should even pray just like Moses did. Show me your glory here in this place so that I can be obedient to whatever you're doing in me and whatever you desire to do through me. Even in Babylon, the glory of God shined brightly to Ezekiel. I believe that he wants to do the same for you and that he wants to do the same for me. I'd love to have you join us tomorrow night. We're going to be talking about some very similar themes to that one tomorrow night as we dive a little bit deeper into Psalm 139. And, you know, we always talk about God and his bright light, but what about the God that leads us into the places of darkness? He is faithful, and he will not do anything that won't lead us to see him, to know him, and to belong to him. God bless you guys. Have a great weekend. I look forward to seeing you soon.